places, please. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kuyari Nora, your favorite virtual castmate. And today, I am giving my review of Tick Tick Boom and sprinkling a little bit of Sondheim sentiments because he did recently pass away. But before I hop into that, if you haven't joined the cast already, make sure that you click the red subscribe button and the bell notification so that you know whenever I upload a video. And add me on Instagram because that's where I give you the most recent tea of my life. So, first and foremost, off the bat, I just have to say, one, this is definitely a spoiler, but two, Tick Tick Boom did everything I needed. I know this probably slightly extreme. The reason why it really just clicked for me was due to the fact that I was watching somebody else's journey while experiencing my own. Find elements that I could connect to and really feel healed by knowing that we all are different, but we all share similarities that can actually bring us closer together than it should divide us. Because at the end of the day, he was a white guy in New York and I'm not white or male, so like there's that. But I appreciated the fact that, you know, we were watching him really struggle with working through the journey. First things first, the casting of this movie was exceptional. The guy who played uh, Jonathan Larson, you would have thought it was him. I mean, visually, they got it. I'm going to add clips of the different cast people that were in there. The cameos that really just stuck out to me that I loved seeing in the film were Mark Shaman, Jason Robert Brown, Stephen Schwartz, Tom Kitt, and I actually found out that that was Stephen Sondheim in the movie, which is kind of crazy. Rest in peace to him. Um, Lin-Manuel Miranda was in it as well. You know, he needs his camera time. Andre DeShields, Brian Stokes Mitchell, Philip Pasu, Renee Elise Goldsberry, Felicia Rashad, love her, Cheetah Rivera, Bernadette Peters, Adam Pasquale, Daphne Rubin Vega, and Wilson Germain Heredia, who were all, all three of the last that I just named, were in Rent, which was kind of bittersweet. Also in there were other Broadway folks as well, but those are the people that stuck out to me the most. So I figured that I would add the list in front of you just in case you wanted to check it out. There are a lot of people beyond those that I listed, but here are some of the names and the scenes that they were featured in for you to view on your own time. Live performers can also do on camera work, which we don't often get to see because usually when there's an adaptation, there's a completely new cast or potentially they might carry like one or two people from the, the show to the movie. But I appreciated seeing different faces, different backgrounds, different white people, black people, Hispanic people, the cross in between, all the things. Also age variations. It was so nice to see younger folks with older folks and really capturing what you would see in New York. The next thing uh, I loved, oh, oh the opening scene was hilarious. Loved it. There was a comment made about going to uh, union auditions and being non-union and hoping that you'll be seen and then when you do get seen it's pretty much much like two bars of nothing and then you get sent home and how from that moment you know you just get tired and eventually just leave the industry all you know all together and I felt like that was a very realistic moment because that is how it happens you know sometimes you go from loving musical theater growing up grade school high school you go to college and you're probably still in it then you enter into the real world of auditioning some things just happen and you're like I wasn't prepared for this and you decide that maybe you want a little more stability in your life and you're just like deuces to the performance world in terms of you being the performer. That is a very real feeling and I thought that was very interesting to hear it being said especially to the masses you know for those non-theater people. Uh, <laughs> I wrote down I don't know if I'm triggered by the accuracy of the story or in shock that I can re just relate so much I think it was just a little of both I was so I was triggered like a lot of the stuff I was just like oh my gosh too soon and then the other parts I was just like oh my gosh yes I can definitely relate thank you for utilizing vision and words to encapsulate the feelings so we get to a scene where Jonathan is showcasing his work and he's there with some other guy and then this person who literally is identical to Sondheim and I'm looking like did they really get this man to be in this movie? 
So I did find out that, yes, they actually did get on time to be in the movie. And I didn't know it at the time when I was recording this, but that's why I'm doing this voiceover. So yeah, there's that. This scene said so much. In the scene, he, Jonathan Larson is receiving feedback for a piece of work that he's presenting. And the one guy is like, yeah, like there's just things missing. I don't know if I like it, blah, 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 blah. Just spewing out his opinion. Sometimes it's like this, I actually disagree. I think that it's full of this, this, and that. And you know, providing a more constructive set of feedback. And then the guy who was spewing out the negativity decided that he was going to tag along to what Sondheim has said and that to me spoke volumes because you'll get people who will feel like oh because I am so and so that I can just rip who you are into thousands of little pieces and hope that you will have the courage enough to pick them back up and paint a, a better picture whereas Sondheim understood the picture that was already painted so he didn't need to shatter it and I'm just like I can relate to this so much oh my gosh especially with the recent event that I had and baby if I were to tell you what <laughs> these industry people some people just be having the gall and the audacity to just give what nobody asked for them to gave so to know that that scene was created and then to hear about the passing of Santan this past weekend you know he really contributed to the theater world in a way that set the bar for artistry now i'm not a Santan like super duper fan but i appreciate and respect his work a lot in terms of how he would craft melodies harmonies and more importantly lyrics and i think a lot of times that gets kind of lost and muddled and he was able to contribute especially in his older years when he was i would say more mature right 40s and beyond where he was able to really share and express the life that he lived and give that to us and i feel like it, it just reminded me that it is okay to not achieve everything by 30, <laughs> which I think is a plague that is really affecting all of us. So it, it was affecting Jonathan Larson. Literally, this is set, you know, right before his 30th birthday. And just to think, we put so much pressure on ourselves to accomplish so much. And it's like, that's unnecessary. Also, there was a scene where we're, they were highlighting the, the start or the beginning of HIV and AIDS becoming an epidemic in New York specifically and it just goes to show you how we have come so far but not so far at the end of the day I mean it's amazing to know that you can receive the diagnosis and take medications and live a very full life unfortunately not everyone has access to that and not many people are educated on it so I think that this shined a light on the fact that we still have to continue to do the work to make sure that we are providing proper education when it comes to our sexual health which is so taboo for some ungodly mm, that's another conversation we just need to make sure that we're being real about these conversations but it just shows you how you know this was a very scary time for many people and especially those who were in new york city so there is a scene where jonathan is you know trying to figure out whether he should go visit his friend who's in the hospital who is dying of hiv or should he continue his work because he hasn't finished the second half of the musical yet and i found this to be very important because a lot of the times as a performer we're we feel stuck in a sense because we're like i have work to do but where do my priorities lie am i going to show up for my family and friends or am i just going to stick with my work and at the end of the day one we have a choice to make but two you have to appreciate people while we have them because we don't know when they're going to be gone and i love that scene because i feel like that's something that i have struggled with in the past and i have watched other people struggle with too in this industry and hopefully we can have more discussions on how we can not put so much emphasis on work 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 but really loving on the people that we have my favorite 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 scene was the cafe scene and you just have to watch it they're at brunch they're in the diner and in the diner it turns into this big ensemble um scene and they're singing i think it's called i think the song that they're doing is sunday 
Oh my gosh, it, I was in tears because I'm like, oh my god, this is so beautiful. One, I think just watching everyone sing together and knowing what that probably felt like to be a collective and like hearing all the voices, watching what voices they brought together, and I was just like, oh my god, oh my god. Of course. <laughs> Also, I like the tidbits of like the actor versus the corporate world, which I mentioned earlier, but we actually get to see a scene where Jonathan is the only artist in the midst of corporate people and just seeing the dysfunction between the two worlds and how they just everlastingly collide. I thought that that was funny. And there's a line where uh, the guy was like, I could get, um, or Jonathan I think says this, he was like, wow, um, I don't wanna be an artist anymore. I just wanna work in corporate. I can have healthcare, I can have a 401k, all these different things. And it was just so funny because like, as much as we love our art, there are some times where it's just like, dang, I would like to just go to a job where I know everything is gonna happen and not hear the no's, which, I spoke about in my trust in the journey video because that is that is a huge component of the journey right at a certain point when you keep getting rejected it it does something to you especially when you can't decipher what is personal and what is not why don't you like it I know this is good if it's good why why don't I have the space to share my goodness so I think they did an accurate job at showcasing that because it is it's real, right? And a lot of times it's not shared. And I think that's just the part that I love about the whole movie because it, it's sharing a very accurate insight on what we experience. Oh, and then I also wrote down, I think the hardest part about the journey too is knowing like, how do you know if you're a Jonathan Larson? How do you know if you're a Sondheim? How do you know if you are, oh, what's next? And that's something that I personally don't know it can be explained when you know you just know. And I think that goes with understanding your intuition and trusting your gut and taking ego out, taking pride out and, and understanding what do you have to offer and what was given to you and what is your purpose in life. That's the only way that I can describe it because the way that life in the universe will just plant situations in front of you I think builds you up into exploding into your purpose the way that you need to and anytime you try to work against it things just don't work out corporate just never worked for me when I tried my hardest I thought I was gonna leave Berkeley and well not leave but like graduate from Berkeley work as a marketing corp girl and just do the damn thing and at one point I thought I was gonna move to Atlanta and work for a big company but that's just not where my voice was meant to be used and it just never panned out ever until I decided that I was going to follow the course of my life which was me using my voice as a performer and as a vocal pedagogue. I, I got the message that was necessary for me in terms and like that's what I mean. Oh the concept of running out of time too. There's just so many messages. Oh my gosh I love it. There were messages about like I'm running out of time. Oh my god I'm almost 30. Like my world's gonna end. No there's life beyond because it took after this last rejection for um for jonathan to come out with tick tick boom i also wrote down sometimes you're just one project away from your big break right sometimes you need that last bit of that last failure or rejection to get you to think about rerouting into what will lead you directly into the path where you want to go there's so much symbolism in this movie that i feel like every actor needs to watch i think that this film should be required for every program and to have more candid discussions with artists tick tick boom to me in terms of the costuming the camera angles that they use the actors that they had i mean some of the lip singing i was just kind of like mm. <laughs> we could lift that out these people worked hard i loved watching the fact that in the midst of this pineapple express that we have been navigating that they were able to craft such a beautiful film i believe this is lin-manuel miranda's directorial debut so congrats to him on this project i'm going to watch it again i'm completely inspired i love the messaging behind it i like the people that they had in it and more importantly i like the fact that how he decided to highlight jonathan's life and tick tick boom at the same time and merging the way that they told the stories was shared with audience members like myself also how first off how am i forgetting this let's talk about come to your senses and jasmine sullivan just really nailing it and to know that she was asked to be a part of this oh my god it just 
lit me. Y'all know I ride hard for my Philly people. So I'm definitely adding Come To Your Senses to my audition book because like she gave what needed to be gave. That is all I have to share about my thoughts about Tick Tick Boom. If you haven't done so already, please go on Netflix, watch the movie. It will completely change or at least I think it'll completely change your perspective on the journey. Share your thoughts down below if you've watched it and I will see you all in the next show. Bye.